afternoon, everybody. Good to see everybody, and uh, obviously, always love coming to Indianapolis. Um, third year now for me in this role. Uh, I'm feeling very excited, refreshed uh, to attack this 2024 season um, the right way, and, and it's going to be an exciting time as we kind of begin the initial stage. This is always a great time to start the evaluation process in person um, on the draft picks and, and the guys that are not only here in Indianapolis, but the guys that uh, don't get invited. We get out to their pro days and just the, uh, you know, just the authentic nature of combine season and the draft season is always a real positive in addition to free agency and, and the idea of being able to, uh, you know, enhance your team and, and really build something, you know, both with short term and long term uh, mindsets uh, that allow you to build the best possible team for not only the here and now, but uh, hopefully well into the future. So uh, excited about what we have going on. Um, all three coordinators coming back, which is uh, really, really a big deal for me. Just feeling really strong about Brian Flores, Matt Daniels, and Wes Phillips uh, in those roles supporting me. And, and then ultimately as we shape this 2024 roster alongside Kwesi and, and Rob and, and, and being in a role supporting them in any way that I can, I'm excited about what's out there, excited about uh, adding guys to our team uh, that love football, that are tough, smart, accountable, um, talented, um, in addition to the guys that we hope to bring back and solidify our roster with. No, no, I wasn't. And in fact, uh, I don't know. Uh, and, and now that uh, now that he's officially retired, I think we can start the head coach watch for Matthew Slater now as well. Um, but uh, I've, I've always told those guys uh, my hope was to race them into coaching and get out in front of them as far as I could, because just like they did much superior to me as players, they're probably going to do the same in this <laughs> capacity as well. Those guys are unbelievable. But I think the world of Gerard um, always have um, tried to, you know, possibly work with him multiple times over, you know, my coaching journey just because of the leader he is, what he meant to me as a teammate during that short time. Um, I know he'll do a great job there. Yeah, I think um, I just go back to our rookie years. A lot of times draft classes and rookie classes, uh, the way you go, thing, go through the rookie development program, the way your, your schedule is a little different, you know, you're around each other a lot. There, there tend to be, tends to be some alphas that kind of set the, set the tone for the whole group. And Gerard was that from day one. He was the first round pick. Uh, didn't take long to see why from a standpoint of his impact on the field. Uh, what a career he had, but I think it's the impact he left, you know, in the in the walls and in the halls of that that building there in New England and Foxborough, um, that probably made it an, an easy decision. Anytime, um, you know, maybe the greatest coach in the history of, of football is 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 moving on. Um, it's never going to be an easy decision, but having Gerard in house and with his traits and his ability uh, to to lead that organization, um, I was really excited to see him get that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, Marcus is a guy, quite honestly, leaving L.A. Um, you know, he was, you know, you interview for jobs and you, you go in there and talk about your list of coaches that you'd uh, potentially like to have. And, um, you know, Marcus was somebody that I was always so excited to talk about, not only from my time with him as a teammate, uh, but then getting to be around him for that year. We won the Super Bowl in L.A. Uh, being around Coach Henderson, who I think is phenomenal. Um, he's been around some great coaches throughout his journey. Um, and then getting to do it, you know, on his own and running his own room now for a couple years. Uh, was really excited to get a chance to talk to Marcus and couldn't be more thrilled with that hire for our team and for Coach Flo and our defense. How your relationship with Kurt Cousins grown over the last few seasons? Yeah, I think it's unique just because we go back so much further than that. Um, having coached him in 2017 and... Uh, just that initial foundation of building the relationship, not only with Kirk, but, you know, Julie, his wife, and, and uh, you know, we love his family. Uh, my family and his family are close. Um, so then we come here two years ago, and Kirk was a huge reason why um, I thought so highly amongst a lot of things about the Minnesota Vikings opportunity. Um, because of my belief in him, uh, we've won a lot of games over these two years with, with Kirk as our quarterback, and thought he was playing as well as anybody in the National Football League when he got hurt at, at, uh, after beating the Packers at Lambeau 
uh, last year, you know, coming off a Monday night win over the team that represented the NFC in the Super Bowl. And, and to have that happen was, uh, you know, it was a big deal for me personally and, and, and much beyond just my role of coaching the team. Um, but it's been awesome to see him through his rehab and where he's at now really get right back up on his feet and attack this thing. But uh, my feelings on Kirk Cousins, uh, you know, are, they really have not wavered in two years. And if anything, they're, they're stronger now, uh, having gone through uh, a, a lot of adversity together. But, uh, you know, we've had a lot of success as well. You know, I, I, I think the thing about free agency is itself is this is not Kirk's first time in free agency. Um, Kirk Cousins knows how I feel about him. Uh, I've held no secrets there. Uh, he knows how the Minnesota Vikings feel about him. I believe Kirk wants to be a Viking. Um, and we're going to work uh, to try to make that uh, the outcome. I think anytime you go into situations like this, it is a negotiation. Um, you're trying to come to an agreement that really works for both sides as we kind of not only build our football team for 2024, but uh, we're trying to do some things to help us sustain for the future as well. And uh, I feel like Kirk is smart and, and you know, intelligent as he is. Uh, my communication is, is always strong with him, weekly uh, dialogue. And, and I feel like we're heading towards a, a good place with Kirk, but uh, like, like we've seen, you know, free agency and the uncertainties from this time of year, uh, you've got to be ready. You got to be ready in a leadership role uh, to have contingency plans and adjust on the fly. Uh, but starting point based upon a couple of the questions here on Kirk Cousins is uh, my feelings on him are, are pretty well known, and, and uh, I know Kirk knows that. Yeah, you know, uh, I was, uh, you know, I've been in contact with him pretty much weekly uh, since the offseason uh, really began. Um, he's doing some of his rehab with our folks in-house. He's also doing some rehab away from our facility as well. Um, I know every, you know, every check-in that I get, both either from the medical side or from Kirk himself, uh, is always uh, pretty, pretty shocking as far as how far along he is already. Uh, I know he, you know, works extensively daily on, you know, all the different aspects. I don't want to go into and expose myself from a medical standpoint of uh, my understanding of what he's already accomplished or what is out in front of him. Uh, but uh, I was not surprised to see that video uh, based upon my dialogue with him and where I see him going here in the near term future as far as uh, the next phases of getting him back to uh, to 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's something you always have to be updating. And, and a lot of time the, the, we have a saying in coaching, you know, your tape is your resume. So you, you might come across uh, some crossover tape throughout the season and see some really cool ideas or see a quarterback playing with great technique and fundamentals or a D lineman with great get off, a, a, you know, a DB on the back end showing some you know, beyond just the traits type of ability. Hey, that guy was coached. That guy was, you know, he knew exactly what was coming and reacted and made a play. I um, mean, you just take notes of that. And then uh, this week and, and some of the, the different events throughout the NFL calendar, you get a chance to build relationships with people. Uh, I always tell people this. That's one of the, the real positives of being a guy that bounced around uh, as a player. I, I feel like a lot of uh, relationships were formed uh, throughout those years. And then my early part of coaching, uh, just getting to be around some great, great football minds and uh, keeping up with those relationships and always trying to pour into those things because you never know uh, when you're going to have the opportunity to maybe hire somebody or, or vice versa in the future. Um, so I think it's one of the things that makes our profession uh, really, really cool. And it's not just the NFL level. I'm glad you said that at the, at the high school, the college level. Our game is constantly evolving and changing um, in different ways. And, and I think the more that we can be uh, aware of that and, and also use that to our advantage when we're, uh, you know, forming some of these relationships as we try to get better each and every off season. I think there's uh, one person in particular that's been well documented. He happens to be our defensive coordinator. Um, you know, my relationship was formed with him 
as a rookie player in New England. Um, he was not exactly calling plays at that point. He was not a directly coaching me, uh, but former relationship and uh, a few struggles later trying to move the football against his defenses. Uh, and that's really all you need to know uh, about, uh, you know, wanting to engage in a process to maybe bring him to Minnesota. And I can tell you a year later, I'm uh, really, really happy that we've got Brian Flores in Minnesota. Yeah, I think uh, it, it is a it is a real thing. You know, you turn on the tape and, uh, you know, you're seeing certain successful offenses, explosive offenses, teams that are putting up a ton of points. Uh, but you're trying to figure out if this play right here, this third down play, does this translate to what we're going to ask him uh, to do in our offense? Or other teams are asking themselves the same questions right now. And I think what you try to do is find the traits first and then go back and apply those traits to them doing certain things that maybe they don't even know they're doing um, at the time. Maybe you ask about them, ask it about uh, here in Indianapolis. Maybe you, you know, it's throughout the rest of this process, but you're just trying to piece together um, you know, the best possible profile you can uh, on the player. And you're doing that for their benefit. So when you do bring them into your building, you know exactly how they learn. You know exactly the best way to teach them your offense, to give them reps walk through reps, time on task. Uh, so by the time it becomes competitive for them, every day is a growth moment. Every day is a growth moment, positive. Uh, there's negatives. There's days where you can choose to attack the quarterback position a certain kind of way. And we're trying to find guys that like to do that uh, to really be in not only in our quarterback room, but our entire organization. It's about guys that love football. It's a guy, are they tough? Are they smart? Are they accountable? And does the game make sense to them that we can then apply our teaching and what we want to do to build an offense around that player uh, each and every day that we get them. I don't think it does just because the rules are so much different now. Maybe when I came out or uh, previous years before the rules being are what they are now in college football, you would really want to evaluate that. But I think each individual player now, they need to be uh, they need to be kind of evaluated and judged on their own. You know, it's the comparing this guy to, to this guy based upon their journeys. You got to turn on the tape. You got to see what they are as a player. You got to spend time with them in person. You got to get on the grass with these guys. Um, and you got to make an individual decision. But I do not believe it's fair uh, to really, you know, re with where college football has gone. Um, I don't believe it's fair to really apply the why behind guys do certain things. We'll obviously investigate it, maybe ask the questions uh, that may lead to some follow-up information we need to get. Um, but, but I don't think it's very relevant at this point, no. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that, you know, the way Ty finished the season was a real positive and, and going year two into year three uh, will be a huge uh, opportunity for him to continue his growth. thought Alex did some good things in our system and, and ran hard, ran physical. As you go through the, uh, the cut-up evaluation process after the season, you can really kind of gauge, you know, things that worked well, things that didn't, things you need to improve on, things that I can do uh, better as a coach. But then you see some of the individual performances uh, that maybe don't always jump out on the stat sheet, but it was a critical play here and there. And, and then we've got some young players uh, in the room as well. So it's, it's always a position that I think, uh, you know, whether free agency or the draft, you're looking to continue to infuse talent and, and different skill sets into that room. Um, but no, feel, feel good about what those guys were able to do. And, and more importantly, hopefully what we can build on from there, uh, specifically with Ty towards the end of the season, I thought, uh, seeing him really come on there and, and, and kind of uh, really start to, start to assert himself was a real positive for our team. No, I don't think you can look at it like that. I just think, you know, all of us, our jobs as coaches are uh, to do the things schematically that we think give our teams the best chance to win. And clearly with the, with the success that they're having at that level, um, the ability to, to move the football at a high, high rate, score a lot of points, um, be incredibly explosive. Uh, they're, they're doing it the way they should do it. And there's no one way. You really turn on the tape and you see different 
different things by different offenses around college football, but I think the biggest thing is understanding how do you project the physical and the mental makeup uh, of, a, uh, of a quarterback into your offense. And, and then ultimately understanding at the quarterback position, it maybe is a, the greatest example of you've got to, your offense needs to be what your players do well. And that can evolve and change player development, growth. All those things lead you to a place as a coach where you better be able to adapt, you, be, you better be able to grow uh, and, and really not be stuck in your ways in any particular form or fashion but always applying the principles that you believe in for core offensive football. And, and I think that's what's important. Uh, that helps you coach it, teach it, give these guys the why. Um, and if they've got the right makeup and the, the right kind of player that you're looking to add into your building, um, they'll take it and run, run with it from there. I don't, I don't think so. I think, you know, I've always viewed um, quarterback play as the, the foundational uh, building blocks are a guy that's accurate, um, a guy that can process information. Um, and, and maybe that's where it's a little different, trying to figure out what that ceiling is from that standpoint. Um, but a naturally accurate guy, you know, could walk in here right now and, and throw the football anywhere they want in this room. And, and, and it just makes sense to them when they pick up that football. And, uh, and then you talk about smart, tough, accountable, like the leadership traits. Um, there's so much that goes into it. Um, I think there's a lot of great examples uh, of guys coming into our league with some of those foundational points and then adding the rest of them to their skill set to become the complete player that they are. So uh, I think it's unique. I think we're always going to want to try to create what is the, you know, what's the stencil? What's the, you know, what, is, what does that look like so it becomes easier to evaluate? I, th I know that's one of the reasons why I love evaluating the quarterback position because it is, it's unique and it's dynamic and it's your own way of really looking at it because you've got to be the one to bring them in, believe in them, you know, uplift them, empower them every day, and coach them to reach their ceiling and their potential because it really is we're in it with them from day one and that's how you got to look at it. Yeah, I love Shane. I thought he did a great job. Um, you just you could just see it, the belief. Uh, that uh, that his team had and what they were doing, overcoming some adversity themselves and, and being very, very competitive. Uh, I've always thought the world of Shane. Um, you know, we, we go back uh, to our uh, Mountain West days when he was at UNLV and I was at San Diego State. So uh, not necessarily bad blood there, but a good competitive rivalry. rivalry. But a uh, huge fan of Shane and, and know he's going to do a great job here. I just think you look at his history, whether it's going back to his time uh, with Philip Rivers, with the Chargers, uh, to now, you know, what he's doing in Indianapolis and what he did with the Philadelphia Eagles offense and the success they had. I think what you see is a guy that's a great example of being able to be, you know, moldable and adapt to, you know, what his team does well and what they do best and, and really form an offense around that. Um, and I, I think that's probably not been talked about enough with Shane throughout his career, but now we're getting to see it, uh, it with him getting a chance to be a head football coach. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys.